Mike, I want to talk about the future of Notre Dame football at the quarterback position. Tyler Buckner, sophomore quarterback, gets injured in his second start at Notre Dame, lost for four months, which means he has lost for the season. But as I look at big picture, there are now 10 football games that he will not participate in, and those are 10 games that could help him become a better quarterback for 2023. The 22 playoff run is over. It's all now about getting this football team better, winning games now, and getting them ready for 2023. So at the quarterback position, Mike, we have Tyler Buckner. We'll see how Drew Pine performs. Maybe he's an option next year. Your guy, Steve Angeli, is a freshman. He's now one snap away from being the starting quarterback of this football team. But as we've talked about for so long, the Irish don't have a quarterback commit for the class of 2023. And I mentioned to you, if Buckner plays well, then maybe you can ease right into C.J. Carr in 2024. But if Buckner is not the guy, hypothetically, to me, not having a 23 quarterback looms larger and larger. Am I being fair in that part of the conversation? Well, Darren, that was like a minute 40 intro. So I don't know. There's a lot of things to talk about. I would first push back on the they're 0 and 2. They lost to Marshall. The seasons, we're just looking ahead to next year. I think no, I us said as they have media to win and games and look ahead to next year. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm just thinking, like, you know, if I'm in that locker room, um, you know, some fifth year senior, I'm like, ah, screw next year. I want to go 10 and 2 and oh, go play in a, in a bowl game, in a major bowl game. Um, so I think that's that's my first thought. You're going to learn a lot about Drew Pine. Um, Darren, there's so, so many uh, variables here. You really can't look ahead and talk about what 2023 will look like at the quarterback position until you see what happens this fall. I, I, I mean, does if Drew Pine comes out and he's just an absolute stud, you know, he's, uh, you know, uh, Ian Book becomes a poor man's Drew Pine. Like, what What if that happens? What if Drew Pine just is a complete baller this season? Then it's like, all right, Pine, you go in with a quarterback battle thinking Pine's the guy, but you still got someone who's played a lot of football uh, coming off an injury, non-throwing shoulder in Buckner. And it's like, all right, then I got Angeli, maybe take a flyer on some 2023 quarterback, or and then you got CJ Carr in the future. Now you're like, all right, dang, this looks like pretty good. You got still got Ron Paulus as a good practice arm. And then things are, are, are looking very good. Maybe Carr even reclassifies. So in that case, yeah, things could be looking good. Or if Pine, you know, is not the guy, and uh, then do you see much of Angeli? How does Steve Angeli look? What what does Buckner's recovery look like? Do you need a grad transfer or just a, if Notre Dame can get an undergrad transfer, is that something that's needed? Does Carr reclassify? How does Buckner's <laughs> injury affect Carr's decision to potentially join this 2023 class, which I wrote about the latest of what I was hearing on Tuesday night at blueandgold.com um, in an article called Lucky Charms. So, Darren, I'm answering your question, which I don't even know if there was a question in there, with more questions. So that's just kind of where we're at. More questions than answers. In terms of Carr, let me just ask this. Does he want to reclassify? Does he not want to reclassify? Is Notre Dame pushing this? How should the average fan understand this whole process? CJ Carr is a brilliant young man who I, I, I think – my understanding is he could skip his senior year of high school, like how things stack up with his academics um, is he could get into Notre Dame, um, you know, after the, I would assume it wouldn't be this semester. I would assume he'd have to finish next semester and then he could be at Notre Dame for the fall of 2023. Notre Dame has talked about like, guys, Notre Dame, struck out at 2023 quarterback i mean the guys they could have landed if you i, I bet if, if tommy reese could go back in time and be like i'll take avery johnson i'll take jackson like i'll go harder on jackson arnold or you know whatever the case may be there do my 
push even harder for Chris Vizina. That's hindsight. You know you're not getting Dante Moore. So it's like, go harder on those three guys. Um, but, uh, yeah, going back to Carr, look, Notre Dame struck out. I think their best option right now, as things stand currently, their best quarterback they could get in 2023 is someone who's committed to them in 2024, and that's Carr. He's an elite player, and he's a little bit older for his age, so he could reclassify, um, and it's not like he's going to come to Notre Dame on 17 years old or something. So um, Notre Dame wants him to. They're not pushing him. They're not guilting him from what I'm told. It's his choice at the end of the day. Carr is focused on his 3-0 and Celine Michigan high school team. Um, I, I don't expect any kind of decision um, to be made you know, and, and put out there anytime soon, really, Darren. I mean, you, if you're Notre Dame, you want to know soon because you've got to figure out who your yeah. quarterback's going to be. But Carr, I, I don't think he's going to want to do something to you know, distract his team right now. But the thing is, Mike, if we're just focused on starting quarterback for 2023, even if Carr reclassifies, it's not like he can enroll early, you wouldn't think, which yeah. would make it seem highly unlikely he would be a strong candidate to start in 23 because he would arrive over the summer. Yeah, I, I mean, it would if Notre Dame needs a 2023 quarterback, I mean, who who else are they going to they going to just take a flyer on some kid? If if I'm Notre Dame, I I feel like I'd rather have Carr in 23, and then at least you're you can still have so much time to go get a really good quarterback in 24. So I'm thinking about this as long term instead of just what's best for 2023 because you have you'd have a really good QB in the 23 cycle in car and then 24 you can go get someone else there's still so many uncommitted quarterbacks you wouldn't be that late on anybody at this point i think people would kind of if i'm a recruit in 24 i'd understand the situation of why Notre Dame's just now offering me if car did reclassify um but yeah Darren i'm going to be completely honest with you i thought Notre Dame should have taken a transfer quarterback this past off season and we talked about that i i and did I say that then? I don't remember. I don't remember. Yeah, we had the conversation, and then soon after, Keaton Slovis came out and admitted that Notre Dame was the first team to call him the USC quarterback who eventually went to Pittsburgh. So we at least had that conversation. Is that the right thing to do? And if it was the right thing to do last summer, and obviously they contacted someone, I don't see how it's not a bad thing to do this year. And I know that may ruffle some feathers and make the quarterback room you know, pretty full, but, hey, kids come and go like nothing anymore with the transfer portal. So I got to continue to add. Completely agree. Yeah. It's, you know, I, yeah, kid can go and start somewhere else if, if he's not happy about, it. I mean, at the end of the day, you know, if I'm Marcus Freeman, Tommy Reese, I'm thinking, Hmm, what's more important to me winning games and keeping my job or not ruffling Johnny's feathers, you know, like it, it, you, you got to win games and, um, Knock on wood, Drew Pine stays healthy and is the guy. But if he's not, you got to think to yourself, man, if we could have gotten Keaton Slovis, how much, I mean, are, are we still feeling really good about this football team right now? You know the talent on this football team. You have watched the recruiting process. You've broken down film. You've talked to these guys. So you know the type of football team they could have in 2023. If you don't have a quarterback, it's wasted. And you just can't go into next year with any if, ands, or buts, in my opinion, with the possibilities on this football team. That's why I sit here today not knowing who Tyler Buckner is going to be. Drew Pine, I don't have huge expectations, so that's why I'm already kind of going down that road of C.J. Carr. Is he an option? Is a transfer an option? Mike, I just think this football team is too good to have question marks at the quarterback position going into next year. That's why I think the grad transfer route is something they definitely have to pursue and see what they can come up with. What's today, Darren? September 14th? September 14th. Let's talk about that later. Let's talk about it. I agree with the basic premise of – I, I think Notre Dame should have cut a, a transfer quarterback this past off, like, off season, especially with the options that were out there. I'm sure there are going to be some good quarterbacks out there who transfer. So I'm, I'm sure that Notre Dame will, will look at those options. 
Um, but yeah, it, it, it's there's, like I said earlier, there's a lot of things that are going to happen between now and the end of the season where we'll have a better idea of what that should look like. Let me ask one more question in regard to quarterback. Does going out and get a grad transfer quarterback hurt quarterback recruiting at all? It shouldn't. Okay. You know, that that's I mean, that's all you'd have to ask the young man the question, the, the quarterback recruit. But no, because if, if you're bring, if I'm a freshman coming in, I mean, I'm probably not going to start anyway. So what does some fifth year guy who's going to be there for a year? What does that do yeah. to me? The, the, the bigger impact is if they take two in your class, like or, you know, if you take a, if you're a freshman coming in and they bring in a sophomore or, or something like that. Um, so, yeah. I, I, it, so my answer in short is to say it shouldn't. I probably should have mentioned Steve Angeli a little more in this conversation, right? That's my boy. I know. I'm I believe sorry. it. I believe in the young man. I know I've, you do. I've been saying for a while that I don't know if it's going to be at Notre Dame or not, but the young man's going to go out there. And he's going to impress people. Darren, he's now the number two quarterback on this team, right? I, I've been checking in with some people, being like, "Hey, how's, how's you know how is he handling this?" Look. The young man is the same whether he's in a you know a, a, a tornado or he's on a beach. He's just calm, <laughs> cool, and collected. He's it, same old Steve, same old Steve. He's just a great, great kid, great leader. I think he's a darn good quarterback too. So we'll see.